All right. DeFeo. Excalibur. You know when it's wrapped up in saran wrap? It's going to be good. Whew. Oh, that is awesome. Nice. When you get a transmission back and it's got your name on it, along with who built it, that's pretty awesome. Freaking A. A new torque converter? Are you kidding me? I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to disconnect the transmission and then we're going to send this straight to the machine shop. That's right, we got a King Ranch full interior. Of the whole Ford project, this is the biggest hurdle to overcome. And as of now, it's the easiest hurdle to overcome. Okay, so our biggest hurdle for our 3126 cat swap in the F350 wasn't actually the engine or making it run, it's actually making the truck move. <laughs> We were deciding between the MD3060 and the 2000. Neither one of them had a parking prowl in it. Both of them were two wheel drive. The MD3060 was a six speed, was massive. I wanted to use the 2000, but um, the school buses are derated for safety. Then we got a hold of Excalibur uh, to fail transmissions in Connecticut, and they actually solved all of our problems all at once for a very reasonable price. And this actually relates to a lot of you guys. So you guys are gonna wanna have to pay attention. What we started with was something like this. Um, it's a 2000 two-wheel drive with a parking brake on the drive shaft. Dirty, used, um, dark oil in it. You don't know the condition of it. This transmission is actually out of a school bus that I bought. If you guys followed along, I took that 24 valve out of this. So this will actually bolt right up to a Cummins. School buses also came with uh, the International, the 7.3s. So you can take this Allison and put it behind a Ford. You can put it behind a Dodge Cummins. Um, <laughs> and he do look at the size of this transmission, you Dodge guys. Throw that 47RE, the 48RE in the garbage. They are offering a 10% discount to anybody who signs up to our website. Um, so you guys actually get this transmission built cheaper. And all you'd need to do is take the transmission controller out of the bus, the wiring that comes through the, uh, the cab, and then somehow tell the transmission your throttle position sensor and your RPM, and you can make this thing move. We'll get into that more when we actually start driving our F350 because it's the same whether we're driving it behind the Cat or a Cummins or an International. Um, but the Fay was also nice enough to take full video of this rebuild so you guys know exactly what they're gonna do and what who they actually are. We weren't able to go see them because the borders closed, but we got them our transmission. They rebuilt it and they just sent it back today. We had no idea that they were gonna do this. We, uh, we opened it up and pretty cool to have your own logo on a transmission. I can tell you for sure that they've got new speed sensors in there. Every one of the bolts is brand new. We got a deep dish pan. Um, everything looks top notch professional. Um, it was shipped properly, safely, securely. It showed up in one piece with no damage. You, you wouldn't think you'd be that, that happy with just the transmission, but man, this is a huge weight off my shoulders. <laughs> Let's get into what they did. Here we go. Hey guys, this is Ryan from Excalibur High Performance. We strictly specialize in Allison transmissions, anything from commercial to custom performance units. Today we have DeBoss Garage's uh, third gen unit in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tear it down. We're gonna upgrade it with fourth gen internals. It's gonna be a wide ratio gear train. We're gonna use LML high energy Borg Warners and a 221 billet converter. We're gonna show you guys around Excalibur a little bit what we do here. This is our QC room. This is where all the parts come through, get checked out, make sure everything's good to go. The parts come through, get machined. Now we're gonna show you the build room and the dyno. Here's where all the units get built and tested as well. Pete does most of the sub-assembly, and Jeff does all the valve body work, and they're tested on there. Dyno for all the units, and that's just a little bit of what we do here.
Okay, so we start by putting in the selector shaft. This is super important for us because it adds a park position to the school bus transmission, which will keep our rig from rolling down the hill rather than relying on our parking brake. Let's first set up the updated piston into the case. Uh, next is the C3 updated return spring, and then a set of high energy Borg Warner C3 frictions and steels. Then last, they add in the C3 backing plate. These are available in a variety of sizes to allow for extra clutch plates, depending on how much torque you want your transmission to hold. And then he uses a C3 assembly tool to compress the C3 sections and allow the snap ring to be inserted. Different clutches will be used for your different transmissions and they have three different ratings for the transmissions. Ours will be the red transmission and that'll be good for 400 horse. Platinum transmissions that they sell are good from 400 to 799 horse and the black transmissions are built to handle 800 horsepower. They move on to the C4 section, basically the same as the C3 section. The P1 ring gear is dropped into the case and the planetaries are put together getting ready to be installed as well. Here Pete's got the rotating drum with the PTO gear and input shaft set up and is installing the C1 clutches. You can get your trans built with the PTO gear or without. Funny fact is that the school buses do not have a PTO gear, so you cannot install that into, say, a tow truck, because when you go to put your PTO on, that gear is not there. Checks all the clearances, and then uh, the clutches for the C2 pack are installed as well. Nice tight little snap rings to make sure that everything is seated and in order. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, pile of clutches in there to hold all those Hirsch turks. All right, so this is where the second part of our build dilemma is fixed, and that's by simply taking a four-wheel drive tailstock off of a 1000 and putting that and the output shaft onto our 2000 transmission, which allows us to bolt on a manual transfer case from anything that was behind a Duramax 1000 transmission. Um, this eliminates a divorce transfer case, multiple U-joints, driveline shakes, and so much more. Basically, we rebuild the transfer case, bolt it on, and it is done. Here Jeff's going over our valve body, deburring all the bores to make sure that the valves move flawlessly back and forth. This is really important as valve E likes to get hung up and this will throw the transmission into limp mode. Since there's no pill to fix that, the valve body gets an extreme thorough going through before it is assembled with all the springs and balls and then they actually test it before it actually goes into the transmission to make sure that it's working the way it should. You can replace this five speed valve body with a six speed valve body but that also includes a new TCU wiring and a reprogram. We opted to go with the five speed just so that we could stay within budget because it does add a few grand to the bill. Here the valve body gets bolted to the transmission, very straightforward, nice identification plate left behind so that the next people know exactly what's been done to the transmission. 
Put the valve eyes in place. Don't forget that there is an internal filter along with an external filter on the Allison's. And then we got our deep dish pan. Just because we have the room, we might as well throw some more oil in it. Here Pete's installing our 221 torque converter with a billet stator and billet piston into the unit. If you rebuild your transmission, you've got a dirty torque converter in there, you run the risk of running all that fluid and crap through your brand new transmission. So it's kind of hand in hand uh, that we ended up with a new torque converter. Run it. And because nobody likes warranty work and shipping things back and forth, the transmission hits the dyno just to ensure that all the solenoids and sensors are working as it should and it allows them to break in all the brand new clutches because they can't really rely on us. We really want to thank Scalber for taking the time to make these videos. Um, we wanted to go down and meet them and shake some hands and until the border opens up we are stuck in Canada. So we want to encourage you guys to build. We're constantly working with more companies and offering discounts to a lot of the companies that we're working with to help you guys finish your projects as well. And these videos allow us to show you exactly what goes on behind the scenes and the theory behind it. Uh, exciting stuff coming up. Scott at Northtown is just about done building our 3126, so that video is getting put together. But the next video will actually be the C10 where we get it running. So, um, lots of exciting stuff going on, guys. Everything's taking a bit longer because of the COVID stuff. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, get out there, build it, and drive it. Here we go.